Let's begin. From a distance, the forest seems calm, but within its confines is an unending struggle for survival. Okay. Look at how goofy this is. This peaceful a protoceratops is struck down by a ferocious meat eater. It is the Tarbosaurus, the last king in the age of the dinosaur. Good word. 80 million years ago, the land would become the Korean Peninsula was the dinosaur's last paradise. Thanks to a moderate climate in lush forests, there was a wide range of carnivorous and herbivorous dinosaurs. These included the Pugyongosaurus, the Therizinosaurus, and clever Velociraptors. Ah, oh, look at those awful bottles. Although Patch the Tarbosaurus was destined to become prince of his primeval kingdom, he hasn't led an easy life. Okay. One sibling was devoured by a Velociraptor when his mother was off hunting. Oh. And his other sibling died of starvation during a period of heat and famine. Okay. Absolutely. In the wild of nature, only the strong and fit are able to survive, and those that survive may live to rule their domain. After a childhood filled with hardship, Patch's first hunt is a success. Okay. That's cool. Stay of survival. Stop. <laughs> That momentous occasion means it is time to leave the protection of his mother. It is time for Pats to stand on his own two feet and face the destiny that nature has laid out for him. Once again, that's the recap. Okay. Go. Um. Travel source the mightiest effort too. Right? The southern reaches of the land that would eventually become Korea. Hey, why do I have to explain at this point? A herd of towering dinosaurs gathers around the lake. Even their mundane activities are a spectacle to behold. Okay. Look at those goofy These colossal creatures are Sintarosaurus. These 10 meter long creatures spend most of their day eating to maintain their five ton mass. They are the most prolific of all the dinosaurs in this era. Prolific? What do you mean prolific? The key to their prevalence is a dietary habit okay. peculiar to these dinosaurs. Before the Cretaceous period, herbivorous dinosaurs simply swallowed leaves whole. But the Centaurosaurus has developed hundreds of motors inside their mouth, which is shaped like a duck's beak. This evolutionary improvement enables them to chew the vegetation, allowing them to absorb more nutrients and thus be more successful at survival and breeding. Okay. Cool, cool, whatever. But lest they overpopulate the land, nature has its own way of reining in the Centaurosaurus. It's predators. Tarbosaurus. Predator. Also, does it, does it, does it, they didn't co. No, it doesn't. Didn't coexist. 
That was why I was sent. The fearsome looking Tarbosaurus is Patch, the king of this forest. He is now 15 years old and has grown up to be a formidable predator. He homes years? in on his usual target, the careless. 15 years. 15 years. This one 15. that has wandered off from the rest of the group. Wrong. 15 years wrong. When on the prowl, Patch never rushes. His opponents usually post lookouts in this vicinity. If Patch is spotted, the lookout will alert the others through a shrill noise produced by the 40 centimeter protuberance on its head. You can see the turbo. Alert your. Fortunately alert for your Patch, comrades. the lookout hasn't noticed him yet. Patch's target doesn't sense the danger nearby and instead focuses on drinking up the water. It's a golden opportunity for Patch to snatch up his next meal. Hey, that, that's not good CGI. The hapless prey struggles in vain. Once caught, no creature can escape the seven tons of pressure from the draws of the oh, Tarbosaurus. His what sixty are strong doing? teeth Comrade, are like hooks get boring away. into flesh. Get away, Centosaurus! What are you doing standing there watching your friend die? You're going to be next! Bastard! Eighty million years ago in Primeval Asia, this violent display represented the majesty of the Tarbosaurus, one of the most dreadful carnivores to walk the earth. <laughs> dreadful carnivores to walk the earth? <coughs> Get out of there! Or is that a defense mechanism? Actually. Is that the the other Centosaurus yeah. went of the site of their friend's death. They're supposed to just charge at the Tarbosaurus and stomp the stomp the Tarbosaurus as revenge. That's it. Either run away or I don't know. Maybe a more better option is to stomp the Tarbo under your own weight. But their plaintive cries are nothing more than background noise to Patch. Shut. He shut is starving up. and needs all the nutrition he can muster now, so that he can survive the harsh, dry season that will soon be upon them. Oh my God! Shut up! You have overall numbers. Why don't you stomp on the tarpa? Why are you trying to stomp on the tarpa? Patch can eat hundreds of kilograms of meat at a time. He can rip off more than 20 kilograms in one bite. Oh no, it's wrapped those. By now, JP3 the smell of raptors blood has wafted through the forest. JP3 the hungry raptors. velociraptors won't. JP3 raptors, are they stalking? Are they stalkers at this point? Don't miss. Are this they stalkers at this point? Because. Opportunity. We seem to see them every time. <coughs> every time we see Tarbosaurus, velociraptors come in. The Velociraptors live and hunt in packs. They JP3. never pass up an opportunity to invite themselves to a feast. But even these unwelcome guests respect Patch's royal position. 
They know they must wait for this king of the dinosaurs to finish his meal before they start theirs. Having consumed a whopping 200 kilograms of flesh, Patch will be able to go for more than a week without hunting. Why don't you... Why don't you drag the Centosaurus carcass and then... And then hide, hide with that carcass and then just feast on the carcass. <coughs> Later on. Patch has been having a lucky day. Likewise for Velociraptors, who can now devour this bounty. Not good CGI. Patch's Tarbosaurus ancestors have lived in this place for more than 10 million years. And Patch's descendants will follow in their footsteps for 10 million more, carrying on. 90 to 70 million years ago, so they're, they're buying. 90 to 70 million years ago, or is 80 to 60 million years ago? I'm assuming 90 to 70 million years ago. Absolutely ridiculous. Tarbosaurus only lived 70 million years ago. If you're implying that it lived 80 to 60 million, here's another problem. Non-avian dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago. If that, if what you said implied that Tarbosaurus lived 60 million years ago, we would have solid evidence of non-avian dinosaurs that didn't go extinct during the KPG extinction event. On the mighty role of King of the Primeval Forest. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous statement. Crazy statement. <coughs> These master dinosaurs choose a spot with the best view of the lake and a few hundred square kilometers that surround it. It's a privileged position for the ultimate rulers of this ancient kingdom. So these creatures somehow know this Tarbosaurus hegemony over them. Okay then. Hey, I'm Nick Ness. What? Hey, Nan. Okay. Hey, Nan. Uh. Takes advantage of the air blowing across the lake. With a wingspan of 12 meters, no bird in history was ever this large. 12 meters! With wingspan of 12 meters! And you're telling, and you're saying that this is a bird? God. And it weighs only 70 kilograms. His bones are hollowed out, allowing him to easily take flight. Absolutely awful. Holy God. I never thought this duck could be worse than this. In terms of accuracy. He is able to snatch up really fish with his beak, CGI and the flexible here. movement of his wings allows him to gracefully fly to any point in the world. Why did you, why did, did you watch Walking with Dinosaurs or something? Walking with Beasts? Walking with Dinosaurs? I know it's not the most accurate now, but it was revolutionary. Their flight may be graceful, but one by one they come in for an awkward landing. Bruh. What? They land like that? They typically live on worms Why and clams found in these mud flats. Why don't they land gracefully as well? They have a unique way of moving on land. They may appear to be walking on their two webbed feet, 
but they're also crawling along using their forefeet located in the middle of their wings. Okay then. That's cool. All but... Eating on... Feasting on... Nuts. I thought the dude. The unique quadrupedal so stance is found only with this species. Discovered near southern Korean's Hainam County. That's why their scientific name actually sounds more Korean than Latin. The forest is getting greener and greener. Amongst this emerald hue, however, a revolutionary biological event is taking place. It is the advent of flowers. Flowers ended up playing a crucial role in the spread of broadleaf plants and grass into environments once dominated by conifers. Carnival. God. This narrator is pronouncing stuff really badly. Not even dino not just dinosaurs. As the flowers bloom, it is a sign that love is also in the air. Okay, so we have creatures mating now. When it's time to mate, the male Protoceratops tries to attract females by showing off the large frill on its head. For Patch, this season signals a long and lonely journey. Since he alone dominates such a wide swath of territory, he must travel quite some distance to find a female with whom to mate. Since male Centaurosauruses outnumber females, the males must go through a fierce competition in order to win the affections of a female. They roar at each other and even peck with their duck-like bill. The more vicious ones might even lash their competitors with their tail. Ow. Okay. Not All the while, the females quietly wait for the winner to see who... As a non-native English speaker and writer, this is crucial for me. Grammarly's digital writing assistant helps 30 million people... Okay, Grammarly. ...who will and be then... their partner. In the end, the young, impatient male walks away after being defeated by the more experienced and skillful elder. Ah, uh, okay. <sighs> so, what's so silly? Okay. It has already been a week. Patch has walked many miles searching for a mate. Oh. He is suffering from an oppressive combination of hunger, thirst, and heat. Just like when he was young. Drink some. Did 
you notice those really A flock bad of Hena Meknes is resting. They have briefly halted their flight in order to quench their thirst. Once they have had their fill, they resume their long journey. Must be tired. Right? <laughs> Hungry and hungry and exhausted. When breeding season approaches, they know by instinct that it is time to leave. Return to a place thousands of kilometers to the south, to the beach where they were born. But the world they pass over seems neither peaceful nor safe. Already, they are indications of geological change, a prescient sign of the dinosaurs' pending extinction. What? Guys. Indeed, their demise is like a ticking time bomb. Um, they were extinct by a meteor and then everything else. A meteor hit the Earth, and then lots of stuff happened, like tsunamis, volcanoes, everything. The meteor alone did not contribute to the, to the non aping dinosaur's extinction. But the stuff that came along with it, like the tsunami, volcano, etc., contributed to the non aping dinosaur's extinction. They have reached their destination. They don't mind this long and difficult odyssey, for it has brought them to where they can easily find a mate and a safe place to breed. Those who have managed to occupy favorable spots have already laid their eggs and are waiting for them to hatch. Okay, then. <coughs> this is a sad state of affairs. Most of the eggs have gone bad because of volcanic gases sweeping over the area. Oh, okay. But thousands of kilometers away, the land of Korea still remains safe. Patch has spent 15 days looking for a mate, but his quest so far is a failure. The long trek and lack of sustenance has made him weak. He can barely move and just waits as time passes. Okay. What an unlucky fella. Is it, is it natural selection? Natural selection. But then at that moment... So he found a mate, right? So I heard a mate. He detects the sound of a female on the opposite end of the forest.
The roar is music to his ears. After searching hundreds of kilometers of forest, he had become desperate, but now he has found a mate. Okay, then. Throughout the mating season, the Tarbosaurus has been agitated and aggressive. With his future mate, he has turned into a gentle giant. <laughs> um. They display their interest by sniffing each other and rubbing their faces. This budding romance is shattered by a dramatic turn of events. Another male has heard the roar of the female. He too rushes in to claim his mate. A duel is inevitable. Each is aware of the deadly arsenal the other possesses, so they hesitate to attack. Instead, they first study each other carefully. Wouldn't they just try and intimidate each other first? It is obvious from his scars that Patch's opponent is a veteran of quite a few fights. They are the mark of the one who has survived many a fierce battle. But his experience works against him. He gets cocky and underestimates Patch. When this would-be suitor gets distracted by the female, jumps at his chance to attack. Oh my god, look at that chunky turbo! In the end, Patch's youthfulness wins over his veteran's opponent's skill. The female approaches Dirt Patch to offer her congratulations. This is her way of showing she approves of Patch as a mate. Those pronate wristlets again. You're serious. You're serious. After a long and arduous journey, Patch and his new wife come back to his nest. Um. Does, okay, for humans at least, dating comes before marriage. For animals, I have no idea. Maybe marriage. She will soon lay dating? eggs that, with love know. and nurturing, will hatch into baby dinosaurs in about two months.
very pretty. Oh. Get out of here. But somewhere far from this land, a tragedy unfolds that will seal the fate of the dinosaurs. What? There are signs of massive explosions that are changing the shape of the Earth's surface. Look at that CGI, Jesus Christ! The collision of the Indian subcontinent with the Asian mainland is leading to formation of the Himalayas. This uprooting of the crust has caused many peaks to explode into mountains of fire. The dinosaurs are helpless in the face of natural disasters like these. Many perish when they are buried in ash and volcanic debris. Those that survive struggle to hold on to their nests. The number of eggs also drops dramatically. The Velociraptor is committed to making sure her offspring survive. After two months of care and patience, she notices a little movement. So the baby is born, baby raptor. Scaly, free. Is that even legal? Despite the difficulties going on around her, the Velociraptor has managed to bring a valuable new life into the world. Okay. In Patches Forest, signs of natural disasters are beginning to show up here as well. This peaceful area and its surroundings have been devastated. Patch and his wife produce only two offspring. These hatchlings, like any other newborn dinosaur, focus entirely on playing and having fun. But as they grow up, they will face more hardship than their predecessors ever imagined. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. For starters, they will have to endure a dry season that is becoming more severe as the climate changes. It is the Sintosaurus that first notices the beginning of the dry season. the past six months, they've been fat from the bounty around them. By instinct, they follow the scent of the rain, which will take them on a northward journey of thousands of kilometers. Their old home is quickly deteriorating as volcanic activities accelerate the destruction of the forest. Oh, whatever. It is becoming more and more difficult to hunt outside the forest. But inside the forest there are still plenty of trees seemingly less affected by the volcanic activity. They come across a Therizinosaurus.
Hatch recalls several encounters with this creature in the past, and right now he doesn't want to start any trouble by picking a fight. Yeah, that's realistic behavior, as you can see. While the parents are away on a hunt, the youngsters have become completely engrossed in chasing down a dragonfly. Oh, are they gonna get Their play by... may seem random and pointless, but actually, it is through this process that they hone their predatory instincts and skills. <coughs> Or he's going to get hunted by raptors once again. Patch and his wife have. <laughs> oh God! Not this one. Have found their prey. As a team, Patch and his mate will demonstrate a different hunting pattern from what they would do if they were attacking solo. Protoceratops seem not to have noticed the predators at all. Have you heard the footsteps? It is at this moment that Patch launches his attack. What, was that Patch? Launches his attack. Hold on. This moment. Was that Patch? It is at this moment that Patch. This doesn't look like Patch. This looks like Patch's wife. Launches his attack. Or Patch's mom. I have no idea. But this doesn't look With all the speed he can manage, the Protoceratops tries to flee. But he never imagined he would be galloping into an ambush. Oh. But back at home, Patch's two hatchlings have drifted away from their nest while chasing that elusive dragonfly. And in doing so, they have wandered into the territory of the vicious Velociraptors. God, no. Oh. They're all crazy. Full of fear, they cry out to their mother. Patch and his mate hear the cries of their young. But these same cries expose them to their enemies. Oh, good God. Stupid. Those... Um, children are like that, right? They don't know anybody. In one fell swoop, the Velociraptor snuffs out the life of one of these hatchlings. The other is shocked, but runs away as fast as he can. Sorry, there was not enough storage room, so I had to delete some before I could continue. There we go. But he runs into another predator that is waiting for him. The claws of the Therizinosaurus pierce the youngster's body. Okay, this behavior actually makes sense. Because, because, you know, these herbivores are quite territorial. Therizinosaurus, no exception. No longer hearing the cries of their young, Patch and his mate split up to search for their children. This actually makes sense too. This behavior actually makes sense too. There's a source. Patch is, is too late. His child is already being devoured by the Therizinosaurus. Patch threatens his enemy with a loud roar, but the Therizinosaurus. See, this, this actually makes sense because herbivores, they don't exclusively eat plants. They sometimes eat meat to supplement their 
needs nutrients. This has swallowed his quarry. He seems proud of his violent act and he's ready to fight. Oh. Okay. Goofy, there's a source model over here. Patch trembles with rage. Oh, okay. We're getting close to the end. Ow. Patch is impatient, which causes him to lose control. He falls to the ground after one blow. Why don't you just go for the neck immediately? Why don't you just go for the neck immediately and end the battle over here? His ribs and legs, which support his seven-ton weight, may be broken. Nevertheless, he musters his strength to get up again and face his nemesis. This is an inevitable showdown between the two strongest dinosaurs in the forest. In the end, Patch was victorious over the Therizinosaurus that killed his baby. But his victory comes at a painful cost. Broken bones and wounds that run deep into his flesh. Uh, they're just gonna get infected. Raptors coming. What? Patch Stop knows it. how dangerous it is to have such injuries in the forest. <laughs> In an act of evolutionary pragmatism, his mate leaves him to find a healthier man. Uh, and the scent of blood from his wounds has begun to attract the Velociraptors. Oh, so... The... The... Patch's mate just... Don't... Patch! There we go! So, Patch is dying. He was once king of the forest. But now Patch must accept the sorrowful fate laid out before him. So he's going to... So he's going to lay there and then die, is it? Painfully and slowly he drags his shattered body to the lake. He sips the water as if he is kissing the same Mother Nature that nurtured him all these years. With ne'er any energy left, he collapses onto the ground. Oh, so, uh, there we go. What are raptors doing stalking 
all the time. There are, With just a short they time just left, always come back. This proud. These raptors are cockroaches. They always come back. Dinosaur that once commanded the forest bids his final farewell to the land. This is how Patch met his end. <laughs> So he's going to die. Patch walked the earth 80 million years ago. Oh. Lord. I don't know if I should be happy. I don't know if I should be sad. The night sky he saw for the last time still remains today. the end. There we go. What a journey. Absolutely awful accuracy. Although the story itself is not too bad. Awful. The inaccuracies just bring it down so much. It's unreal. Ugh. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed Tabasaurus the Mightiest Ever. Me watching it. The entirety of it.